So there are three types of gravimetry that I will be uh, sharing with you this morning. The first one is particulate gravimetry. The second is volatilization gravimetry. And the third one is uh, precipitation gravimetry. So in uh, particulate gravimetry, your analyte is already in a particulate form. So because of that, it's easier to separate it from your matrix. And so therefore the separation step is either filtration or extraction of the analyte from the sample. So one common application um, of particulate gravimetry is the uh, determination of total suspended solids in treated wastewater. So in this method, um, you use a glass fiber filter to retain your suspended solids and then uh, after filtration, you dry it to a constant weight at 103 to 105 Celsius. So this method is was published by AFA. Uh, it's called method 2540D in standard methods for the examination of waters and wastewaters. And so normally when you do this kind of uh, test or this method, you have many, many samples. So um, it's impractical to just have one uh, suction filtration setup. So normally you would have a manifold where um, you have multiple uh, suction filtration setup attached to a vacuum pump. Another application of particulate gravimetry is the determination of crude total fat in chocolate. Uh, normal procedure uh, includes ex extraction of the sample with uh, an organic solvent such as ether for 16 hours. Then you let the extract evaporate to dryness at 95 to 100 Celsius and uh, you weigh it. And then uh, last application that I am presenting under particulate gravimetry is the measurement of total suspended particles in atmosphere. So you have a, a high volume sampler with a pre-weighed filter. And uh, normally you uh, collect the air sample for 24 hours. And after that, you measure the filter and the mass of the suspended particles will give you the uh, concentration of TSV in, uh, in the atmosphere. All right, so that's it for particular particulate gravimetry. So let's move on to uh, volatilization gravimetry. So in volatilization gravimetry, thermal or chemical energy decomposes the sample containing the analyte. Uh, usual measurements are the mass of residue remaining after decomposition, the mass of volatile product collected using a suitable trap, and the change in mass due to the loss of volatile material. So from the name itself, the separation step for this type of gravimetry is the volatilization of the solution containing the analyte. So a known applica application of volatilization gravimetry is the determination of inorganic ash content of polymers in general. I'm just giving Pololan as an example because I've worked on it for many years. So the task is called residue on ignition task, where um, you have a sample and you hydrolyze it using hot sulfuric acid, and then you ignite it to high temperatures to 500 to 600 Celsius for three to four hours. So the remaining ash is cooled then weighed. And um, this test method is, uh, you can find it on USB or United States Pharmacopeia 281. Uh, Pololan is a biopolymer that has film-forming properties typically used in making breath strips and vegan capsules. So these uh, particular tests will uh, help determine if you're for forming a stable uh, film. You don't want a lot of inorganic uh, inorganics in your uh, Pololan. Another application of this type of gravimetry is called loss on drying tests for drug substances. So uh, this is published uh, under USB 731 where um, you crush at least four capsules or tablets and then you let it dry for extended periods of time under vacuum. So it depends on the mono what's called monograph. 
or what the requirements are for that particular uh, uh, drug substance. But here, you're uh, almost measuring the, the moisture content, but you're not calling it moisture content because in the process of drying, there are other substances that are also lost um, yeah, during, during the, the drying process. All right, that's it for volatilization gravimetry. Uh, the, the third type of gravimetry is called precipitation gravimetry. So in this type of gravimetry, uh, you, you use a precipitating reagent or lepicant. Hello? Yeah, we had, uh, we had some kind of, uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was an information mission. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Welcome for us, uh, to those who just joined in. Uh, we're, okay. yes. So, uh, like I said, the uh, precip in precipitation gravimetry, you uh, use a precipitating reagent or precipitant uh, to a solution containing our analyte. And, uh, most methods, in most precipitation gravimetry, it's a simple double displacement reaction between the analyte and the precipitant. So before you uh, filter the, the mixture containing the analyte, you have to add the uh, precipitating agent first. And so for example, you want to measure the uh, percent barium in a solution of barium nitrate. So what you, you, you do is, um, you mix it with potassium chromate or, or your precipitant and what you get is a uh, yellow precipitate which is barium chromate and potassium nitrate so these products are based on the uh, double displace displacement reaction between potassium chromate and barium nitrate well, so dr here, lindy I, uh -huh. yeah, I just have like one um, one I, I guess it's like a very good opportunity for us to emphasize to our uh, student participants that it is like for you to be able to um, design an experiment that would involve precipitation gravimetry it is very important for you to be very knowledgeable of solubility rules. exactly thank you that's right that's uh that's so true so this type of gravimetry is based on uh solubility rules just like what dr jeff uh, had said thanks for that so yeah, it's, it's a long, uh, it looks like a long process, but um, once you have the, the mass of your precipitate, you can perform what's called stoichiometric calculations in order to achieve the uh, your goal, which is percent barium uh, as percent weight over weight. So um, in precipitation gravimetry has been replaced by more advanced uh, techniques. However, you can still uh, use it in some applications like uh, assessment of the accuracy of other methods of analysis. Uh, it can still be used to verify the uh, composition of some standard reference materials. And uh, it can be used for a qualitative test, uh, identification of inorganic and organic analytes. Okay, so that's it for gravimetry. Um, so let's move on to the next uh, technique, which is uh, titrimetry. Titrimetry. 